Hello everyone and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad you're here. I've had a number of subscribers ask me about applying background effects in Microsoft Teams. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. I'll show you how to do that before you join the meeting. I'll show you how to do that during a meeting. And I'll even show you where you can get some cool background effects that you can use in your own meetings. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe for more videos like this. Let's have a look at backgrounds. Okay, so I'm going to start a new meeting. I'll hit meeting and the name of this meeting is going to be called backgrounds because that's the subject that we're going to talk about. So working with backgrounds can be a very useful way if my background's fine because I've sort of set up my office to do online teaching. So I've got lights and it's, you know, we've got stuff on the wall. I'm okay with all of this, but for a lot of students or for a lot of people working from home, the background may be distracting. It could be, for example, in the student's case, it could be a, a bedroom or it could be a kitchen or an area where you don't really want to show all of the background. And we have a couple of different options of what we can do in order to get rid of that background. First of all, we could not use webcams at all. And I did another video on that. But if we do want to use webcams because we want to have the, the voice interaction, what we can do is underneath the just before I join the meeting, you'll see that next to the video audio there's this little tiny icon which has sort of if you hover over it it's a it's a little picture of a participant and when i click on that that invokes my background settings so i can set this up before i even join the meeting notice right now that i have no background effect applied and it's important to understand that you can apply the effect and it will remain in effect until you unapply it so there's an actual step to unapply the effect now Sometimes you'll go into backgrounds and all you'll see, you might not even have this option because at the IT level, at the administrator level, that can actually be removed. Or you might only have the option to blur your background. That's a common IT setup where they don't want backgrounds, especially if uh, you have younger students because they might have a distractive background in their house, but they might also decide to put in a, dis a, a, um, a background. So there's really a few settings. You can have no backgrounds allowed. You can have it so you can just blur the background or you can have it so just the built-in Microsoft backgrounds are available. Big option that allows you to do everything is where you can also add your own custom background. So let's look at blur. So blur just does that. It blurs the background. You can still see roughly what's in my environment here. You can see I've got some large object over here. I've got something above me, but it's pretty blurred and you can't really see too much. To turn the effect off, I have to go into the unapply and now it goes back to having no background. Microsoft has a number of useful built-in backgrounds. Here's, for example, a example of a home office. Here's an example of another home office. Uh, you can have this incredibly empty house. I mean, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm a big fan of minimalism, but this is really minimal. Anyway, so it looks like you're at a construction site. You can go in and have something nice like a corner office. You can have a classroom environment. So there are a number of built-in backgrounds. You can celebrate, have a little birthday party in there, all sorts of things. Now. Backgrounds are good. You can see that it, it does. Obviously, this is a background and, and everybody would know it. If I was to go into here, you could say, oh, are you actually located there? You can see if I move my hands a lot, it'll depend on the video, but you can see some ghosting or artifacting. And for uh, for those of us with silver hair, uh, sometimes are really around your head, you can see a lot of artifacting as well. So the backgrounds aren't always crystal clear, but I think it's pretty good. One of the things that we can do, we can also have fun, a little Minecraft in there because, you know, this is Microsoft and you can really see here, you know, this is great for younger uh, viewers. They kind of like it. And I can also load up my own background so I can add a new background. And here in my download folders, for example, I have this uh, this data sort of abstract data field in here and where it puts it on there, but it also puts it down at the bottom of my backgrounds. So I've got this background that I've downloaded. I can also put on this networking background that I've downloaded. So you can see I've got a number of different backgrounds that I can put on there in order to uh, create some visual interest. You could even go so far as to incorporate backgrounds into your learning. So let's say, for example, I want to talk about networking. I could actually use this as a bit of a slide deck, I could say, okay, what we're doing here is we're connecting up into, you know, these ports. We have these connectors, uh, some fiber connectors in there, and then we can go in here and I could 
add a new background. You'd want to do this in advance and plan it out, but I can add in a new background and I could, you know, I could apply this background, talk about the different types of connectors and such. You might think, oh, this is great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my PowerPoints. I'm going to save them as, as images, and but it reverses it. So if I was to do an, a PowerPoint, I'll just show you. If I go into PowerPoint and I say, welcome to class, looks good to me. But when I apply it as a background, it reverses it. So it's a little bit of a gotcha in there. If you want to use anything with text, I would avoid any backgrounds that have text in them. So we go in here. You can see even this is backwards, right? This is Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, Ethernet three, four, so on. Um, these are all reversed. So be careful when you're using anything with text, it actually reverses it. Okay, so now when I join the meeting, my background is in effect. So I'm gonna join the meeting. And the reason I'm gonna do this is I'll show you where I can change it within a meeting. So now I join up into the meeting, it takes a few seconds. And there we go. Now I'm in the meeting, big screen here. Now what if I wanna change my background during the meeting? And this you can really see that the, you know, the 10, 100, 1000 uh, PCI 3E uh, e is, um, is, you can see that the text is reversed. If I wanna change my background, hit the ellipse, go into apply background effects. And if I wanna get rid of the background, back to my office, you have to click on it and then you can preview it. Nobody else sees this right now. This is what it'll look like here. And when I apply it, the world sees my regular background once again, um, again, I can just choose it, I can preview it, but then to actually push it out to the audience, I have to apply it and turn it on. So that gives me an opportunity to decide whether I like it or not before I, before I do anything with it. Myself, obviously I use, uh, I don't use a background at all. Uh, for a while I had some green screen stuff, but there you go. That's backgrounds in Microsoft Teams. But wait, there's more. So a lot of people will ask me, where do I get my background images from? And the answer is the good old internet. But let me show you where on the internet. So if I go into a, a web browser, I, I use this service called pexels.com and they are not uh, sponsoring this video, but you pay a fee and then you can download royalty free images, which is very, very handy. You can also upload your own images so that other people can use some of your photos as their backgrounds or in, in their own website design or whatever they're doing. So these are all royalty free stock images. So if I go in here and choose a background, let's say I wanna choose a cool background like, um, well, they're all cool. These are really nice pictures, but let's take this one because it is in landscape mode. So I'm gonna download that. Notice I can actually donate to the individual photographer that took this photo. So if I want to give them uh, um, a donation or I want to give them a shout out, I can do that as well. And that's handy. Um, you can also upload your own. So I prefer to upload some of my images. I contribute to the collection and I take from the collection. Uh, that's Pexels. The other way, of course, is just doing a internet search. So here, when I do a Google search, I just did a nature background. One of the tricks here is that if you're going to use this, click on tools and you can choose the licensing. Make sure that you're using Creative Commons or that you're using uh, a royalty free images. And the reason you want to do that is if we're teaching things like academic honesty, then we should not use copyrighted materials in our own backgrounds. Even something as simple as a background should not be a copyrighted image. But then I can go in here. You'll see that some of these are licensable. So I'm going to avoid these for now. I'm just going to use the backgrounds here. Now what I can do is I can click on new and those will be in my downloads folder. So I downloaded a whole bunch. Uh, these are all from Pexels. So I can go in and choose my background and that once again puts the background on. And if I scroll down, you can see the background now appears in my list. And because I'm in a meeting, it doesn't automatically kick in. So I can apply it and there's my background. I could have previewed it before, but I have a nice background there. Again, hit the ellipse. And there's so many cool background effects you can have. One of the things I would encourage you to think about as well is to not, um, not let your background be distractive. So you want to make sure that it's not a distraction. You can go for some simple backgrounds in here. Go here. I could preview and apply it. But, you know, just a simple background. I can concentrate on the talking. And again, in my case, I very rarely use backgrounds because I've sort of set up a studio. Okay, so hopefully now you can see where you can get some cool new backgrounds as well and how to use them. 
Okay, I hope that was useful and that you'll start using backgrounds as appropriate. If you found the video useful, hit like, uh, subscribe, share with others, and here are some other videos that you can take a look at. As always, thank you so much for watching.